Welcome to Cue Lab. In today's video, we're going to be exploring how forces can influence springs. Now, I have to be honest, I couldn't find a good spring around the house, so I've had to order some. I'm going to put the things you need to copy this in the description box, but don't worry if you can't, you can just copy my results and we'll see some really interesting physics together. So let's get started. Right, so I've got this little spring here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the extension of the spring when I apply a force. Now remember the extension of the spring is equal to the distance it extends minus the original distance. Now, I can't find my second ruler or a longer ruler because I've used one making this. So I've borrowed a ruler. And we'll use that in a little bit. But the first thing I'm going to do is make a note of all the different measurements I want to take. And I'm going to use this force meter. And so the different measurements I want to take, I'll take one at zero centimetres of extension, two centimetres, three centimetres, four centimetres, and the zero, well that will be the distance extended when there's no force applied. So what I can do, and I'm going to measure these later, so I'm just literally noting it on a piece of paper. I'm going to just draw a straightforward line, like so, and we'll make all our measurements from that line. So, if I start at zero, and I line that up, then with no extension, that's how long the spring is. And I'm just measuring from one end of the spring to the other end of the spring. I'm not measuring from the loop to the loop. It doesn't matter where you measure from, as long as you keep it the same each time you try. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on this end of the spring until I've extended this by two centimetres. Now remember, I was already at two centimetres, so it'll now be four. And you can see it started to extend a little bit. So what I'm going to do is move this back to the line there we go and I can make a little pencil mark to show the distance we'll move it down one and I'll pull it a bit more there we go so I need to get it back to the line Ooh. Next one, four centimetres. There we go. And I'll keep collecting these until we've got to nine. measurements. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit interesting here. I'm going to measure this distance, and that's the distance of the spring when it's not extended. And I can say that that's 1.9 centimetres. But then I'm going to go down to here, and I'm going to measure in 1.9 centimetres, and I'm going to draw another line coming down from there because we can do the maths just using a piece of paper. So the distance the spring has extended is just this little bit, because remember I have to take off this distance. So I can measure the extension really easily. So let's do that, shall we? I'll go through these. Now, you can maybe see a problem here, though, that these are not 
false values. So I'm going to have to turn these values into forces using our calibration curve for the force meter. So let me show you how we're going to process this data to see how a spring is influenced by applied forces. So here we can see the data we collected with the force meter distance that we use to apply a known force and the amount that the spring extended. However, we first need to work out how much force was applied. So, as we've done in the previous videos, we can use the Q, we can use the force meter calibration curve or line to work out each of the forces we applied at the given distance of the elastic band on our force meter. So the first one's super easy because it's zero. But then if we look at two centimeters and go across onto the blue line and down, we can see that's about 1.4 and we can slowly populate each of our forces until we've completed the table. Then what we'd want to do is plot a graph where we look at how much the spring extended when we applied different forces. It'll look a bit like this. It's very important to remember that the force applied, that was our independent. We knew what that was, we were setting it. But the spring extension, well that depended on what we were doing. So that was our dependent variable and we were measuring that one. So we'd have our spring extension on the y-axis and the force applied on the x-axis. Let's have a little bit of a closer look at this graph. Now there's a number of things that jump out straight away, but there's one really simple one, which is that as the force applied increases, the spring extension also increases. That's really simple, isn't it? As you apply more force to the end of the spring, the spring itself extends further. Now, there's one other thing I really wanted to focus on with this graph, which is this set of points here that are coloured in red. That's a linear area. And that means we can fit it to a straight line. Linear means we can fit it to a straight line. And this is called the elastic region. And it starts to get us to think about some interesting properties of materials. An elastic material is one that, when you apply a force, it will change its shape. But when you stop applying the force, it will return to its original shape. So you can think of the spring when we were pulling on it. Well, when I stopped pulling on it, it would go back to its original shape. Now, you can start to see that at the top there are two points that diverge off this line. And that's when something starts to behave plastically. And a plastic behaviour or a plastic material is something that when it's deformed, when a force is applied, it changes its shape. But then when the force stops being applied, it maintains the change in shape. It has become deformed. And that might be something a bit like a Play-Doh, where you would press your finger into it. And when you take your finger away, well, the, the impression is still there. So that would be a plastic material. Now, this elastic region, there's a lot of very interesting science we can do with that. And there's a very famous equation called Hooke's Law to investigate this. And we're not going to do that right now. We'll have a look at that in future. But if you want to really explore a bit further, I suggest you have a look into Hooke's Law. Now let's see what happens when we deform the spring plastically. So we've seen that when we apply a force to a spring, that 
it's elastic. It goes back to the shape and the force is removed. So if I apply a force, there we go. So it changes its shape, but then when I stop applying the force, it returns to its original shape. But we've also seen that there's a limit where this will stop behaving plastically. And if I let go, oh, you can see it goes back. So what I'm going to try and do is show you. If I apply a force to this, I keep applying one, keep applying one, keep applying one. Eventually, look, it's deformed. So it's now undergone a plastic deformation and that's where it doesn't go back anymore now it's at that part of the curve where it starts to bend it's actually to go over because it doesn't return to its previous shape the force applied has deformed the spring and that's a very important difference elastic means that it returns to its original shape a plastic interaction or plastic force application results in a deformation. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that made sense. Next week we're going to be looking at moments. So if you want to read up a little bit you can have a look at moments. See you in the next video.